Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I'm of the stars and I have for you part 4.2 of the series Satan's Powers and What to Do About Them by Alice B. Claggett. Part 4.2 is entitled Satan Speaks as a Dragon. I have a quote for you from Revelation 12 of the King James Version of the Bible, which is public domain. These are verses 7 through 9. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was there a place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And here is Revelation 13, King James Version, verse 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Here's my commentary. On the above description of Satan as a dragon, in my personal milieu, the draconic aspect of Satan left earth a few years ago. As this life form was not compatible with the planet's increasing light quotient. Possibly they are there for you still, but I'll gather not for long. I note also that the Latin word Draco, Draco, in case that is what is referred to in this biblical translation, means dragon or serpent. In the context of this blog, I've categorized it not as dragon, but as drac, a reptilian species in popular folklore. This might also have to do with the category reptilian mind in my blog, Awakening with Planet Earth, https colon slash slash awakeningwithplanetearth.com. You can search there for the category reptilian mind, but I believe there are also uh, relevant categories under um, hybrids, human hybrids, dracoids and draconians, and there are a lot of popular names for these. Now I have some very interesting pictures to show you. There are two sets. The first is Antichrist and Christ. These are strikingly different pictures from strikingly different centuries. These pictures illustrate what happens when a Christ-like person listens to Satan's whispers and what happens when he does not. This image is called Antichrist with the Devil from the Deeds of Antichrist by Luca Signorelli. And 1501 or thereabouts, long time ago, and it looks like this. All right, you can see a Christ-like figure, but in a bad frame of mind, a negative frame of mind, listening to what we presume must be Satan there with the horns and with the usual not very nice looking wings and a, and a, and a mean expression on his face. So you can see, uh, that Satan is a very bad companion and might even turn someone who might otherwise have Christ consciousness into an antichrist as mentioned in the Bible. Keeping in mind that the Bible mentions antichrist in the plural and that not just one man who is stealing the limelight here during the ascension time. So this might be one picture of one person who might otherwise be like Christ, but in this in this context, because his, his companion is Satan, he becomes the Antichrist. 
then more than 300 years later we have the answer to that picture called The Temptation of Christ by the Devil by Felix Joseph Barrias in 1860 and it looks like this. Here you have another Christ-like figure in this case, it's intended to be Christ himself. And what he has do, decided to do is not to listen to Satan. Here's Satan over here looking rather similar. And he is being cast off by Christ. So Christ himself, he exhibits complete Christ consciousness. He, he represents God the Father on earth. And, and that the reason that he is able to do that is that he casts off the advice of this bad companion, Satan. How does he do that? By asking God for help. He asks God for help to, to, to escape the snares of Satan, I feel. So here are your possibilities. Pretty cool set of possibilities. You can be more like the Antichrist if you're a person of great personal merit and you listen to the admonitions of Satan. Or you can be more like Christ himself. More like Christ himself if you ask God for help, and are able to elude the snares of Satan. Two radically different outcomes. In this category, Satan speaks as a dragon. I have several more images for you. One shows the Archangel Michael standing on Satan the dragon. They don't know who the author is. It was done in about 1920. It's in Wikimedia Commons. I, I like this image because it's not so dire and dreadful as many of the images of Archangel Michael defeating Satan are. Here we have the aspect of Satan that speaks like a dragon. And here we have a depiction of Satan as the dragon down here and Archangel Michael up here. See, Archangels are able to overcome uh, Satan very easily, but we only just have to call on him. That's catch-22. We have to ask them for help. If we could ask God for help directly, and we could ask, ask for the intercession of the Holy Spirit to help us to do that, because Lord knows dragons are pretty fearsome. I have a comment for you on that image. It's, it goes like this. Archangel Michael is often depicted as standing on or slaying a dragon, that represents Satan or the demonic realm. As you may know, the image of Satan has changed quite a bit over the centuries. And you can tell from the next image and the final image that I have for you just how much that change has been. This image is called Hell by Hans Memling. And I'm assuming that the central figure in the image is Satan himself. Pretty scary dude, huh? Uh, Bird-like feet, um, horns on his elbows, a strange-looking head, sort of a, an animal head, more or less of a, a human form, and suffering people in a river of fire down here. Here in the middle, we have something very interesting. It's an image of a human face with fangs. In the area of the um, lower triangle or the gut brain or the subconscious mind. And this touches on the topic I've spoken of previously. I have for you the comment on this image and it goes like this. I feel this image of Satan with a man's face with fangs on his belly. Means that a person whose higher mind, his brain is ruled by his gut brain, behaves in a way that might be termed satanic or demonic. Thus this image offers a glimpse of a man who has not, like Archangel Michael of the storied realm, slain his dragon. The man in this image is not a noble, prince-like person able to fly on the wings of God. Rather, this man is bound down to the hell worlds where his vision is cast down to the suffering 
and soul-wounding aspect of the human condition. The man who controls his reptilian or bestial impulses through faith in God, on the other hand, sees and responds to the eternal soul in the eyes of every person he meets. This latter man exists in the heaven worlds, though his human feet still tread on earth. These images from the video I'm put along with their captions at the end of the video so that you can see them uh, more clearly. That's all for now, dear ones. May God bless you and keep you safe and be with you through all your days.